Hey everybody, Ronaldo Waffman here with the Airstream video manuals, video series, part of Gear It First. Today we're going to talk about upgrading the Airstream box to version 3.0 and what some of these features will open up for your Airstream possibilities. So first of all, we need to put the device in bootloader mode. Basically, this means that it's gonna turn the Airstream box into a USB class compatible device because you will need to update the firmware via USB. So we're gonna go ahead and click in our patch button here. And of course, the Airstream box is already hooked up. So we're gonna go into our bridge then you're going to go into our bridge firmware now i'm already on the latest bridge firmware which you can see here revision 3 it's still on wi-fi revision 1 which that's the most up-to-date software but we're just going to go ahead and put it into bootloader so you're going to click here where it says start bootloader this is going to put the bridge into bootloader mode and update the firmware okay now as soon as you plug in your airstream device into windows now that it's connected to Windows, you're gonna see here where it says, uh, this is the bridge bootloader zip file. You're gonna unload or open that zip file and decompress it into a folder. Do not run it from the zip file because it's gonna crash on you. The folder here, it pretty much gives you the instructions for the bridge firmware. So the application is called the Airstream Bridge USB Bootloader. These DLLs you don't have to worry about because that's what the application will take care of. All right, here we go. So we're gonna load the file. And the file, I want to say it's on my actual C drive. Bridge bootloader, there it is right there. And we're going to hit the program button. Now while this goes on, magic is happening inside the box. The little elves inside it are learning the new functions and pixie dust and whatever magic goodness happens inside and a cookie comes out all right so disconnect it ready to go at this point you'll need to shut off your airstream dmx and you're going to launch it back up go back to your bridge firmware screen and you should see your bridge revision 3 and your wi-fi revision 1. So now, what options does this give you? Well, let's go over a few different options using the latest version of Airstream DMX. First of all, we have the usual here, right? You have where you can name your network. Let's go ahead and go into advanced settings. First, you have the external network enable. This was a huge feature requested by a lot of users from the get-go. And let's say, for example, you are an event where there's a pretty strong Wi-Fi connection and maybe the Airstream Bridges Wi-Fi connection isn't strong enough. Maybe you're going to be on the opposite side or maybe it's, you know, congested at 2.4 and you want to run it at 5. So this is going to let you basically join into anyone. So I'm on this network called Tacos for Trump. There's the password there. And I just enable it and it'll log into that router. You can also select a default static IP address with your address, router, and net mask. Now, technically, if you're network savvy enough and you know how to do port forwarding and all that good stuff, you can technically control an Airstream box from anywhere in the world. Then you can also have options to hide the built-in network. And then my favorite, SACN mode. Now, if you guys are familiar with streaming ACN, it's basically like Artnet, it's much more improved. But in this case, before we discuss the much more advanced features, that's gonna be for another video, this is going to allow the Airstream software to communicate with the bridge. Instead of using its proprietary format, it's gonna use streaming ACN. When you're communicating with the Airstream bridge, or the Airstream app directly to the bridge. It's using its own proprietary TCP protocol that the developer has created to give you a real smooth resp uh, response. So basically when you're in TCP, the bridge handles those fades. So if you're fading from one scene to the other or one step to the other, the bridge, the actual box itself, handle those fades to keep everything as smooth as possible. So for example, if you lose a couple of frames, it's not gonna look jerky. Streaming ACN doesn't do that. It literally sends a stream of DMX frames at 40 times a second that's gonna fade those channels. So if you drop a whole bunch of frames, it's gonna look jerky. But if not, it's gonna look fine. So why would you wanna use streaming ACN? I mean, that doesn't sound like a great thing. Well, it really depends on what your needs are. So for example, we now have an option in the app that allows you to control lights to the BPM. 
but let's say it's a really fast song. Let's say it's EDM and you want the lights to like, <laughs> you not need the lights to go that fast. Well, with the TCP that may not go as fast again because the box is handling the fates for a smooth response. What that means is that in a bad wireless environment, that timing is most likely gonna suffer where the changes would not even be, would not evenly be timed. However, streaming ACN, it's pretty much going directly on time because it's sending those frames, if that makes sense. But again, at the same time, if you have a bunch of drop connections, it's going to lo look a little bit jerky. So play around with both of them. See what you like. You're going to find that streaming ACN, if you have a good connection, is going to give you a much, much more responsive experience with the Airstream app. So there you go. Now, click on to the next videos after this because it's going to be mind-blowing my name is Ronaldo Offerman with gear at first doing another airstream dmx tutorial any questions comments leave them down below thank you guys so much make sure to subscribe share with your friends and so forth have a great night and god bless